<laughs> okay. So um, I have actually uh, removed some part of the class loader because Seth is anyway going to uh, talk in his second talk. Okay. So what we are going to discuss is uh, Java class loaders. So anyone who work extensively in the class loader here? I mean, I am not the guy. Just a bit. With, uh, yeah, using a class loader, download XML DC library so that they can end the flag very fine. Everything went over my top again, man. This is the problem. Hello. Uh, it, it is next to Juniper network. Just ask someone valence building. It is next to the Juniper, but it is next if you are coming from that side. It can be one back also if you are coming from this side. Yeah, correct, correct. Yes. It's first floor. It's first floor. 1J001. Okay, come to reception and ask first. Ground floor. Ground floor. Sorry, ground floor. Yeah, whatever. Now I will uh, mute this and uh, then let people figure it out. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you were telling something about the class. Yes, yeah, so right? the class loader would load for local funds. Mm -hmm. class but suppose I have an uh, XML DC jar file mm -hmm. I want to access on the fly because um, uh, I have other documents also lying. Okay. So I use a class loader, which essentially calls an URI class loader, pulls in the ah, I see. verifies the document. And gets okay. Okay. Thanks, man. Uh, this is an Oracle mandatory slide called Safe Harbor Slave. That means don't make any business decision by listening to this guy. Okay, that is as simple as that. So, what we are going to do, discuss today is that uh, a little bit of uh, the pre class loader thing that is the classes and data and the different types of class loader which keep changing actually in JDK 9. We have changed the types of class loader. And uh, the most important thing is class loader delegation model. And then I'll show you some of the implementation snapshot. And uh, in JDK 7, we had a, something called parallel class loading. And then how to debug the class loader issues. And then uh, module class loader, which is JDK 9 class loader. I will just cover two slides of it because we have a talk in detail. OK, that doesn't matter. You should cover more. <laughs> OK. So uh, OK, anyone can tell me what is the signature of a class? As we all know, the signature is unique because else bank will not give you money. So what is the signature of a class? How, how you can, oh, I should not show this slide, yeah. You mean class uh, How you will identify a uniqueness of the class? Namespace, we say, right? So package and class. Huh? Package and class. Package and class, okay. Someone else, uh, no, you have Mr.D. class for a reason. No, Oracle guys are not allowed. Okay. Anyone else? Completely qualified class name plus the checksum, MD5 checksum that you attached. MD5 has nothing. Uh, cafe B field is just uh, a content of the class file, right? So, common for everything. Right. So, I think you guys can come this side only. We'll just bring the chair and we will throw the people little bit. Uh, it's like 10 people coming <laughs> That's the problem when we change the building. So they will be like. So I, I used to have a Sun Microsystem where uh, you will just enter into the gate and uh, the floors will start. So you don't have to do like half kilometer turn to reach to the place. And this is how old building used to be, right? You just open the door and you will be entered like you are in your home. Okay. So I, I don't know. I like always in that because they will have a unique building, so they will not mess up with all the car kind of thing. Okay, uh, we should hold it or we should continue. Take a pause. See what happened is they, uh, they were short of these badges. So all these people have to wait until yeah. security comes in place. Just... Okay. Yeah, so anyway, I was asking that, okay, what is the signature of a class? How you will identify the class uniqueness? So someone told that class plus the package name, right? Who told? Yeah. Anything else to add? Maybe it's 
uh, that's a content of the class. So yeah, I mean, if I if I'm telling you hello world, okay, and if I will put two hello worlds, uh, what will happen? I mean, uh, uh, how I will identify that which hello world is getting executed? That is the question. Okay, so yeah, it's it's actually package name plus please come. So it's actually the package name plus uh, the class name, right? So you will have some package name foo divided by foo slash bar slash something and hello world. And one more important thing is called class loader instance. So you can have a hello world with uh, two hello worlds with the same package name, but two different class loader can load it, right? So uh, the, the, the point is discussion is that uh, we say once a class is loaded in the JVM, the same class cannot be loaded, okay? But what is the same class is actually it's a class instance name plus package name plus the class loader instance. Name. So this is not a class loader, this is class loader instance. Okay. And C1P1K1 is not equal to C1P1K2. Okay, where is the K1 and K2 is the instance of the class name. Right? And uh, class you know, the class is like uh, codes and it don't change. Whereas if you talk about the data, data represents state and state generally change, right? So, um, uh, and the instance which we are discussing here of the class and the class loader, actually class loader is also a class, right? So uh, class plus a state is called instance, right? So uh, anytime if someone will ask you that what is the same class concept, it is class name plus package name plus class loader, right? This is fine? Now I will discuss about the class loader. So. Um, Class loader makes uh, things very simple in Java because uh, we have different kind of class loaders which actually load the class. And why is the region of different type of class loaders and all we will see in the uh, forward sl slides. Yeah. So the first class loader we discuss is called bootstrap class loader. Some people say pre-model class loader, right? This, uh, you, know, you know about this? Okay, so uh, uh, the special thing is that about the boot, bootstrap class loader, it is, it is a native implementation, it's not a Java implementation, okay. And VM runs it without any verification, okay. So these are those classes which actually, uh, it's like your string class, your, uh, your class class, or your all the classes, your object class, okay. So there is no verification required because these are the trusted classes, okay. So all the classes which belongs to your IT.jar or IAT.jar, these are called trusted classes and VM can load these classes without any verification. So we, we assume that these classes are not a threat for the application, right? Any questions? So it is very simple. Then uh, till the JDK 8, we used to have an extension class loader. Okay. Extension class loader resides in your uh, Java home, JRA lib uh, This is your Oracle JDK I'm considering. Okay. Because it can be different path for uh, different Java. Yeah. So it, it loads the class from the extension directory. Yeah. And you can do it by the Java command by using minus e java exe.br. And if you want to see the implementation of this class, you need to go on some misc launcher and extension class. Loader. Yeah. And the third type of class loader is called app class loader, which is one of the most important class loader, right? So application class loader is uh, those classes which uh, get loaded by your class path, right? So you pass a lot of uh, your jar files in the class path and those jar files will get loaded by the class path, right? So you, you pass the class path or in the Java argument, you pass minus CP or minus class path, right? So it is actually equal to java.class.path which maps to the class path. And if you want to see the implementation detail, you can see the app class loader in the same place, right? Now, uh, yeah, uh, right, before going to this, I will show you the class loader uh, parent delegation model. Anyone have heard of uh, class loader delegation model? How the class loader delegates to, okay, you know, good. So what happens is that uh, when you say, get me the class, right? You, you, are, you are telling the VM to find out a class for you. So it delegates to something called class loader subsystem module, right? Class for class loader subsystem module delegate it to something called app class loader, application class loader, right? And uh, the hierarchy that we follow in the class loader is that we keep delegating till the parent will not reach, right? So application class loader will delegate it to extension class loader and it will delegate it to bootstrap class loader, right? 
bootstrap class loader will look up into the runtime libraries that is rt dot jar and all the trusted jars if it will not found it will return a null then extension class loader will give a look up in the extension library if it is not found this guy will also return a null and application class loader then have to see into the class password right this, this is your java password which you pass right <coughs> And then, if that is also coming null, it will go back to the class path subsystem model. And if that is null, it has to say uh, class not found, right? And before that, actually, it will uh, try to load the class if it is already loaded. So that part I have not done. Okay, so this can be the first instance. So when you are telling uh, get me this class, it will first look if the class is loaded or not, right? If not loaded, this is the thing that will happen. So it's simple, right? It's it's just like a marriage concept. Your marriage, you pass it to parent, and parent passes to the sub parents, right? And someone decides your marriage. Finally, right? So, so uh, uh, bootstrap class loader is a lazy initialization. Bootstrap class loader is not a lazy initialization. Other than that, uh, all the other class loaders are lazy initialization. Bootstrap class loader. Uh, no, we load all the RT dot jar. We used to load all the RT dot jar. JDK and we have little bit different uh, style, but uh, uh, we we use to load the complete attribute. Yeah, this is fine. Any doubts about it? Anyone who didn't uh, got the thing, I can repeat it again in very high speed. Uh, Please come up again. If the class is loaded by the extension class loader, I application now same class. Uh -huh. We ask application class loader to load. Hmm. We need first check whether the class is loaded or will it directly delegate to extension class loader to check. It will directly delegate it to Bootstrap. So first it has to find out uh, the class is in the Bootstrap or not, and the class is in the extension or not, and then only it can come to application class. Loader. Class is already loaded. Class is already loaded, then nothing will come out. Yeah, that means. Will application class loader check that all the classes loaded or not? Ah, no, no, no. Before going to application class loader, we will uh, resolve it. Actually, I will show you the code in the next slide, then it will be clear. Okay. So, uh, whatever you have asked, I will show you. So, um, yeah, just to show the things, uh, say like I have a hello world here. I is it visible? Yes. Right, good. So, this is a very simple hello world which say welcome to Java, right? So what I'll do is that I'll run this class and what it should uh, uh, give me the output is, can anyone tell me? No one asked this question in interview. What it should give the output? Welcome to Java. Okay, so you didn't got the output, right? It is welcome to Bangalore. So why it happened? I have done a simple job. I have just made a hello world and I have just run the hello world. Okay, so uh, these are the simple things uh, for the college guys, but I feel interesting. So, yes. So, what I have done is that in the extension class path, in the extension class node, I have put a hello world. Right? So before seeing your class path, it will first see the extension class path. Right? And in the extension class path, I have made a, something called hello world.jar, this, this one. So uh, it, will, it will not read your hello world, it will read first the ex extension. And if there should be a class called a string, it should go to the bootstrap and find it out. So you are not allowed to make a string class, right? So you, you got the point. So if you will see the content of this hello world, um, this is what you got loaded, right? And if I will, uh, if I will uh, delete all the things that is welcoming us, I'm somewhere wrong. Yes. Ah. No need to compile. So now the expected result will come, right? 
Very simple. Right. So this I just gave you this example so that how the parent delegation model works. Right. So if the class uh, is in the application class loader also, and if the class is in the extension class loader also, which class it will load? It will load extension class loader, and we have seen it by example. Excellent. This is visible in the end, right? Okay. So uh, this is the copy paste of the code that is uh, that says uh, load class. Okay. And this was your question. So, oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Extension, you said lazy Yes. So my question is now, like uh, you have one uh, Java file in the extension already, mm -hmm. and you have uh, another one compiled also. Correct. First time anywhere, then it's like it's not. Uh, I would cache. I would say cache neither from the extension neither from you, right? Right. Not loaded. Right. So first time it will go to application. Mm -hmm. It will load the application. Your uh, your your class file, not the from the extension. No, it will just delegate it to extension. Okay, and extension will delegate to bootstrap. So in that case, boot, bootstrap didn't got anything. It came to extension, and ex extension got the file. Okay. Yeah. So uh, uh, load class actually have a string. So uh, basically, the class loader get a string of the class name, and it tries to find out the physical location of the class. This, this is as simple as to understand, right? So I am just passing a class name, and it has to find the physical location, or it has to find the byte code of the class. That is what it means, right? So what I did is that I am just passing a string which will be some class name, and I am passing a boolean value that is called wizard. Okay, and uh, first we will try to find loaded class, right? And if the find loaded class is done, we are good enough. If it is not there, what we will do is that till the parent is not coming, keep uh, delegating it to the parent. Okay, else you will not get the bootstrap parent, right? So this this is a recursive call, right? You you got my point, right? This load class is a recursive call, and recursion will break in the else condition of finding the good stuff, right? And then uh, if not, then uh, you throw a class class exception, and in that you say find class. Okay. So find class by default implementation of find class is again to throw a uh, class not found exception. Okay. But uh, you can you can override. If you are not getting a class, what you have to do is that you, it's your decision. So most of the application, the find class will also be overridden by their implementation. Yeah. But by default, find class implementation is just it uh, it uh, throws a class not found exception. Yeah. This will how the find class looks like. Okay. This is the default implementation in JDK. It will just throw new class not found exception. Right. But you can override this method. And uh, okay, sorry, my slides are a little bit here and there. So you got this. You got this. I, this is clear, right? Uh, <coughs> yes. Instead of telling it, is it passed to the class code? So why not directly start from the class code? Why go application class code or the next day start and then delete? Right, uh, because uh, this is how JDK follows it, but this is not how it happens in the real life. So J2E guys and all the web containers guys actually screw up this delegation model. They can they can have any delegation model. Even they don't uh, delegate it to parent also. Anyone from here who use uh, class loader in J2E or some of the applications app, app server? Right. So you don't follow any parent delegation model, right? These guys just try to find out their classes first. <laughs> okay. And because of that, there are a lot of complications. Uh, so this is this is just uh, this is just a thing to follow, but it it no need to follow this. Yeah. Um, yes. So I had a slide uh, which I am not going to discuss in detail that I have written in the end that how to write your own class loader. This is most of the people not write, but most of the framework guy or server guy they will write their own class loader. Okay. And there is a lot of uh, things to discuss about that. You will, you have to actually override a lot of methods and you have to write your own. Methods. Okay, these are the most prominent reason why you should look for your own class loader because you want to load the class from an alternative repository, right? Like you want to uh, load from the network connection, like you said, right? And uh, the satellite is generally used for partitioning the code, that's why they uh, override the class loader. 
and basically a lot of people use for the unloading class because app class loader is something which can be unloaded right so the system class loader uh, sorry the bootstrap class loader and the extension class loader cannot be unloaded but uh, the complete app class loader can be unloaded so whatever the loaded class in the app class loader they can also be unloaded right so it can it can reduce your memory footprint by a great extent not going to discuss in detail yeah as i wrote Uh, yes, just a little bit. These are the two ways you can write your own class loader. So you have to extend something called class loader, and you have to do a super call of my class loader dot class dot get class loader, or you can say super dot get class dot get class loader. Out of these two ways, there is one good way and one bad way. Anyone know what is the difference in these two ways? There is only one line difference, right? Super is the difference. So my class. Yes, so I I just want to tell that my parent is the one who is loading my class, right? This class, right? So I can tell in that way also. I can tell in this way. So any anything wrong in uh, any of the implementations? Any idea? Just think that we are in the constructor of my class loader. So which call is good for constructor and which call is bad for constructor? Yes, the first one is better approach, right? Because when I say dot class, it effectively is like a static instance because it's available. Right, because uh, most of the time it happens that get class will not finish the work because you are still in the constructor. Okay, so that's why uh, we actually uh, try to suppress using this method because get class generally they say that get class should be used after creation of constructor. So you should not use get class in the constructor constructor itself. Yeah. Now we have came to parallel class loading. Okay. Uh, anyone use parallel class loading here? Uh, I highly people use class loading, so that's <laughs> not a good question. But it's good. I mean, um, you are you are not using a class loader. That means JDK class loaders are working fine. <laughs> right. So uh, what happens is that lot of people who used to write their own class loader are prone to deadlock. And uh, deadlock happens in lot of class loader which don't follow the parent delegation model, which we discussed right right now. If you will not follow the parent delegation model, there is a chances of getting deadlock in the class loader in multi-threading environment. I will show you example how it works. Happens. So JDK seven, we have modified the lock mechanism. Okay, and the complete detail can be read here. And then we have uh, uh, put something called register as parallel capable. Okay. That means that you are capable of loading your class in parallel. Now I'll just show you how the deadlock happens. <clears throat> so a simple thing to understand: a class A extends B, class C extends D, right? And I have two custom class loaders, CL1 and CL2, right? So CL1 itself load class A, but it delegates to CL2 for class B. Easy to understand. And in CL2, it itself load class C, but it delegates uh, CL1 for D. Easy. There is there is no complication here, right? So CL1 can load A, CL2 can load C, but both delegates to the other class loader for B and D, right? Now what 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 we will do is that say the thread one we have to load uh, class A, right? So when you have to load a class A, you have to uh, lock the class loader, right? You have to lock the instance of the class loader because in multi-threading uh, scenario it is possible that uh, class loader two class loader can load at same time, right? So you have to lock the class. So what we will do, we will uh, lock CL1 because we are loading class A, and now we are loading class B, which is done by class loader CL2. So I have to lock CL2, right? And in thread two, I will uh, I have to load C, which is that's why I have to lock CL2. And for loading B, I have to lock CL1. And you can see there is a deadlock, right? There is a deadlock in this code, right? So CL2 is waiting for this guy to. Uh, Leave the lock and CL1 is waiting for that guy to leave the lock. Any any uh, complication? I can explain again. It's fine. Okay. If you are telling it's fine, it's fine. Uh, so how to resolve this? Okay. Now you have to reply. I will not reply. <laughs> One 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 simple solution is that like have lock on all the class loaders at the same time. Please come up again. 
Okay, put lock on all the class loader at same time, man. Good solution. Yes, sir. Okay, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, but not effective solution. Yeah, that's uh, one way to resolve. Any other solution? Yeah. So all the classes, uh, one class loader should load. Should make sure it should. It is not. You cannot do that. You just told users that write whatever you want. This is what people do in Java, right? Java, we have given so much flexibility that we tell write all the shit around you. So, no, and someone has written this shit. That's as simple as that. So, greatest solution can be that uh, <coughs> uh, you should first decide what one class will be needed for instantiating, uh, loading that. Okay, so you are telling resolving a class load at the compile time. Um, not possible all the time. Delegation model should be in the delegation model should be the. I mean, we will force for the delegation model, right? You cannot do that. Okay, it breaks the backward compatibility of that. Is there any something that yeah, the second class order that it is part of a, a reference? Ah, uh, not really. Okay. I mean, both the class order can live independently. There is there is nothing you can. Okay, so solution is simple. Okay, so what happens that? Uh, we lock the class loader plus the instance of the class. Okay. It is it is a very simple solution. Okay, so we do we not only lock CL one, but we lock A also, and A is the class instance actually, right? This class. So now uh, there is no data. So uh, if parallel capable, you can just throw it out. So if CL one is loading class A, I will lock the CL one instance plus A both, right? And if I have to uh, load B, I will lock CL two plus B both. Right now there is not no deadlock. You can you can see into the code, right? So we will first write a quiet lock and it won't get deadlock. Right. So we just have a uh, change in the locking mechanism. It's not only the class loader who will get locked; it is the class loader plus the instance of the class who will get locked. Right. So it's not understanding. What is how is that? Ah, uh, so lock is a uh, lock is a uh, binary variable, right? So what I did is that I am not locking the class loader. I am locking the class loader plus the object instance, right? Right. So the only thing that can dot lock CL one plus A is CL one plus A. Nothing else can block it, right? So this this is a simple solution, and this uh, this solution will go if you will say parallel capable. That is the last slide we had a variable, right? Uh, this register as parallel capable. This is just to uh, not break the backward compatibility. But you how know, how yes. Over an object, right? The class one and a is not an object. That are we will make it. Okay. We will make it. So it's not like that. There is a method that will get called, and uh, they will take both the things and they will make one object. Okay. Yes, good question. So uh, we uh, have two synchronization also. We can add. Please come again. Can we have uh, two synchronization? Ah, uh, you can have multiple level of synchronization. That is possible in the world. But this, I felt it's uh, okay to have this approach. And this uh, register parallel capable is a method of class code and class. It's a uh, method of class code. Yes. Okay. And in JDK9, we have added uh, a one more method that is called each register capable or not. So it can tell you that. Okay. And uh, there are a lot of things here, but I will not discuss in the detail. So this this link will help you, okay? Because uh, a lot of things need to know that completely your complete parent needs to be parallel capable. Okay, your parent also need to be parallel capable. Else you cannot make the parallel capable downstream. Yeah. Anyway, this this looks good. Now we will come to debugging part, which is the most interesting part, right? So investigating class order problems. So what are the common class order problems? We see every day, right? Class, class, class exception. Class, exception, okay. That was the complicated one. Yeah. Some simple ones. No class. No class found error. Okay, then. Anything else? A lot of people are still not writing here the framework code, it seems. Yeah. We have got the earlier issue. Which one? So that the deadlock one. The deadlock one. Yes, because still you playing. must be throwing the class the class loaders like anything for your code, right? So it's it's very simple. Okay. Uh, yeah, while reading that byte. Uh, 
class not found definition error something like that comes no no class def found error thank you sir for reminding me it is uh, sometimes we cannot copy paste and when we type the first time it will be wrong only <laughs> right so this is the uh, first and the easiest thing that comes is called class not found exception and uh, you will get something 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 like this class could not be found and it will give you the price right so uh, why a class cannot be found right i mean class uh, class loader cannot find that so um, okay let's first discuss and then see the example okay so the the basic debugging step is that you have to find out uh, which class loader got uh, in in what and what is the parent uh, class loader because it can be loaded by there is something called uh, calling class loader and there is something called loading class loader both are different right you understood that right because it is not that app class loader can load the class it just calls it. okay basic basic problems is that source cannot be identified to the class loader or the class loader parents are not set properly or wrong class loader is used right so um, wrong class loader if used most of the time you will end up having something called class cast exception also i will show you an example okay that how it happens so let's see a simple class not for that. Mm, okay, so I have uh, mm, so I have say I will make a B class and then I'll say uh, right and then B dot um, please correct me if I'll write wrong something I because and uh, what we wrote print hello no print uh, so there is a b class and b class has a method called print hello world which is public so sounds good uh, oh it was not print hello world as age grows memory become very weak sorry for that it's small right it's small. so <clears throat> i will compile b class and i will make the class available then i will go for a class and uh, if things are fine it will get compiled which mostly not happens and then if i run a it will work fine or not what is output now people will be scared in telling output yes what is the output because well, we don't know the entire system there. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> you don't know how many class loaders you have. <laughs> okay, I I agree with you. Just for uh, this thing, what is the output? So it will give hello world, right? So things happen <laughs> as expected. Okay. So what will happen if I will delete uh, B class? Are you sure? Yeah. No class def error huh? or no. class not found. No. So second thing I have not covered only. Okay, so let's better cover first that and then we'll discuss. So this is the first issue and this is the second issue. That is called no class def found error and this is error. You know what is the difference in exception and error in Java? Yeah. Anyone practicing for some kind of interview? No? <laughs> <laughs> and these things they ask in interview, right? This is the only question they will ask in interview. Yes, who told yes? Please, can you tell me the difference? Yes. Exception handled by me. Errors we cannot handle. Errors we cannot handle. Are you sure? Yes, can, but sometimes can. Error avoids the virtual machine. Error avoids the virtual machine. Okay, no. you, you are not practicing for interview. Actually, errors are not meant to be handled. Errors are not meant to be handled. Very good. And exceptions you can handle, right? So, um, okay, so no class definition found is actually error and it happens for the same reason with a little bit of uh, trickiness. Okay. Now this is an error. So JVM uh, always want a difference between the exception and error. They want to be very clear if this is an error. Because error is a panic condition. You should do something proper. Okay, it's, it's because of your mistake, some error have came. Now there are two things. So we can throw no class definition found error or we can throw class not found error. Now back to the code. Uh, okay. 
So we are going to press button now and what will happen? No, are you sure? Now you are experienced, guys. No class left found error. And in the trace, don't go because in the trace, after it will call, it will call class not found. But the first thing we'll tell it is no, no class because uh, yeah, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bad situation, right? It's, it's, it's a simple, you don't have a B class, right? You don't have a B class, right? So it will tell uh, no class they found error and then eventually uh, it will tell who caused this error and it is class not found error, right? So it's a win-win situation where both the party won, who told. Now uh, let's change uh, and try to load the class dynamically. So uh, how we do? Um, something called yeah either we can write or better to go by class dot form name right so i can say java dot lang dot string which error this guy will throw okay so first uh, java c hopefully it will go fine yes are you sure why Okay, the class is there. Yeah. Okay. Now um, let's. Uh, yeah. Let's load um, this. This is not there. Are you sure? Um, okay. Sure. Hundred percent. Okay. Good. So class not found exception, right? And this I can handle it. It is just telling that uh, class dot for name, I didn't got, I can write anything into the exception, I can take it back, right? So, uh, yeah, I can just in place of throwing that exception, I can put it right as block and in the catch, I can do whatever I want. I can tell, okay, sorry, I did a mistake. I have to load string one, not string one, string. I can do that, right? So what I can do is that I can just write it right here. And uh, I can tell uh, catch. Okay, don't scold me for that. I cannot write that big name. So that's why I have put exception. Um, this, no need to remove this, right? Or we have to remove it. And then here I can do anything. I can just tell uh, that uh, go and uh, get uh, something else. Java dot lang dot uh, string, right? And uh, before that, even if you are interested, I can tell the user that. Uh, sorry, I have done mistake. Right? That's it. This is this is the way. That's why we use editor man. Where to close try? Before this catch, right? Okay, thanks, man. Good. So things should work. If not working, we'll go home and work. Make it work. Now what? Sure. Yes. Okay. Unreported exception class not found uh, ah, must be caught or declared. Try catch. Ah yes, I have to do it into the try catch. Okay. Anyway, you got the idea, right? So I have to uh, change the try catch. Leave it. So uh, the overall uh, idea is that the exception can be handled, right? Okay, who have heard of third kind that is called class cast exception? The class cast exception may, must have, we, we may have seen at the time of, uh, when we try to uh, put the wrong casting, that, that also we, we get class cast exception, right? Also. But this is a class cast exception by giving a wrong class holder. This is visible. Just assume, let's say it's visible. Okay, so we have, uh, I, I'll just, I'll say this, bootstrap and then we have extension class order and we have app class order, right? And we have two custom class order, that is custom one and custom two. 
and then uh, what we are doing is the target dot class we are trying to load with custom class one and custom class two. This class loader instance is called target one. This class loader instance is called target two. Now, if I will do uh, target three, where is target three? Okay, something. Maybe target two and target one. So, if you will try to load, uh, uh, if this class loader has been loaded by uh, this target. And if you will try to execute this class order, uh, this this class with this class order, it will throw you a class test. It is as simple. Okay, means you have loaded with a different class order, and you are trying to execute with a different class order, right? So it will throw you a class test. Yeah. I think uh, during decentralization of this class class exception terms. Uh, uh, please come up again. Deserialization, lot of class cast exception. No? Actually, class cast exception is uh, nothing related to class order only. It, it, it is for a lot of things. Yeah. So, this uh, picture I have copied from orally. So, I have just put it there. Yep. Yes, please. Please come up again. Then we load the classes. Mm -hmm. What kind of control? I mean, uh, you're saying that it's loading by different class orders, right? Right. Yes. You can uh, load your own class by your own class order. You want to see how the class? Uh, okay, I probably cannot show you, but uh, if uh, you go by minus uh, verbose class or classes, I'm not sure. Oh, we have uh, bad code here, right? So I will do something else. Right. So these are the class loaded just to run a hello world. And you know which one with the, the first class to get loaded? Which class should load the first? Which Java class it should load first? Ah, wow. Good man. Object class, yes, because object is the mother of all classes. So, uh, does it showing you which class got loaded? Yeah. So there I ran the command in object class got loaded first, and second is serializable class, which most of the time it happens like this only. <coughs> right? Yes. Sir. For hello world, why it has to load all of? Them? It loaded it dot Why it has to load? It has to load because system dot out dot print and now system is a class. System class parent is a. System is a serializable class and it parent is object class, so it has to do something. Just forget it. <laughs> it has to load everything. <laughs> I can just assure you this all these classes are getting used in just putting a hello world. Oh, they are used? Yes. That is why I learned. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> if system, uh, system is not getting out of code, it won't load all this. Uh, Some classes. Your uh, class is also a child of object class, so it has to load all the object is object. Now, now let's see the serialization class is getting loaded or not, right? Okay, okay. Now this is a big fight you guys want to do. Uh, so can you guarantee me that a string class is still not loaded? Right? Loaded for guaranteed? Uh, are you are you hundred percent sure there is no serialization in this? I'm not. String don't uh, come from serialization for sure, right? Let's check. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, we have to put uh, word box. It looked little smaller, is it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or we are just satisfying ourselves. Oh, it is not small. It is not small. It is not small. And where we started? <laughs> Something is wrong. So better to do this and put in out and uh, then see out. Uh. So serializable is still there, right? So, and uh, I need to see that it is a cache technique or uh, something. Right, so but not using some uh, it, uh, I think it will load all the class of RT dot jar. This is what I, I ah, right, yes, it, it will load all the classes of RT dot jar. So it should, it should do that. Yeah, it should do that. 
let let me check it out sorry let's not take further confusion okay we'll check it out i just want to also contains the suit component in the compiled no 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 no, no. no. it's a src folder is a separate folder. we are not so good right okay <laughs> where we store the byte code on the disk only in it dot jar there will be dot class file after loading from there area depends on what is done ah you are asking that where in the java he will get mostly go to the perm jet the perm you know right young gold and then perm yeah in the class code only will have no it will be already available the class loader will load it i mean what what you are asking yes class loader has to put the byte for yes okay and uh, this is to a uh, very boring sleepy slide for the project jigsaw but it is very important because next uh, discussion is completely on this so if i will just uh, do anything which is uh, you are not covering this right okay thanks so java is in index two class loader that is bootstrap and system class loader system is actually app class loader we don't mandate extend class loader so you can write a java without extension class loader okay and it is possible that ibm will have a java which don't have an extension class loader okay that is very much possible when you are running uh, the jdk the oracle jdk it, it it creates three class loader it creates vm bootstrap it creates extension it creates system class loader as i mentioned already if you are running into the module mode which is a new mode in jdk 9 where it loads the module the jdk creates m plus 1 class loader okay this plus 1 is actually the vm bootstrap class loader plus for every module jdk creates a class loader so you you understand the module concept in jdk 9 we have something called module like uh, you have a java based module where we have all the things which are minimal required for java to run or uh, java application to run then you will have different modules like string or collections these are all in the base module right then you will have a different module like java.xml where you can have xml then you will have a different module called java.logger where you will have all the logger things right so these all things are different different modules and all modules are getting loaded by their own class loader and so string is part of bootstrap class loader or is it part of module class loader Ah no! In uh, JDK nine, it is very confusing now. What bootstrap class loader do? So oh, yeah, that, that yes, that a good that's a good question because uh, uh, actually it starts with the uh, module. Uh, it's, it starts with the module class loader, and then uh, how it use the VM class loader. I will I I will not cover in detail, but I will just tell you, right? So yeah. When you run a Java Hello World mm -hmm. program, so basically JDK single process is created, and only main thread will have to take care of. correct when you say class loader it is just happening in the same thread only main thread only yes. only one process 100%, and 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100% yes yes that's why main is static so main get loaded and then main will load the class there is no separate thread thread for there is no separate thread okay you can have the parallel class loading if you want a separate thread yeah. if you want to right so uh, the one of the module uh, will have a class loader and if that module is dependent on some another module it will do the class loader delegation to another module so here the delegation is you understood right it's module to module delegation so if java xml i am trying to load and it has a dependency of java base it will uh, it will uh, delegate the class loader right so no need to ha huh, yeah so you will see this kind of problem uh, coming up a lot with the module mode so a class being loaded by multiple modules and you are using that in the code so you basically don't tend to uh, take care of who has loaded which class you just use it uh if a class is already loaded why it will get loaded again i i didn't know suppose i have a class loader so hmm. i have created a separate class loader oh, right and that requires some system classes some collection classes okay so i will have that in the base class loader of the module yes it, it you have to delegate to that uh, java so in my class loader if i try to use some collection libraries Will no. that not cause any issue? No, why it will cause this? Because you are saying that it, this will be loaded by a separate class loader. That's perfectly fine. It's a delegation model. It, okay, it will, it will, yes, yes, it, it just go to delegate and it will do the work. So we have something called module mode class loader. Okay, and uh, 
it will have a vm bootstrap class loader plus one loader per uh, one or more module okay uh, a module loader will start the application so this is the very important thing which you were discussing the vm vm class loader don't start the application right module loader loads their dependency that is java base okay and it do all the uh, loading and it can delegate to the parent what whatever we have discussed right so it, it, if it will go from one module to another module it will delegate the class loader also and there is no extension class loader uh, in jdk so if your code has minus d java dot ext dot dir just throw it out it will not work in jdk because this we have used at most of the places generally where people try to fit in like things like locale and all what they will do they will put into the extension class loader right and lot of places people use extension class loader if you will see in the real application so it will no more work we don't support any kind of extension class loader so now we should move it to class path we should move it to class path or module path yes ideally module path but uh, you can do it in class path also right isn't it the backward compatibility is removed there uh, we never uh, mandated that uh, ex extension class loader is required that was my previous slide <laughs> i know this question so i already told java is mandates only two class loader right it never mandates the extension class path that is just a jdk implementation right so uh if you are not following the specification you will tell the backward compatibility will break but if you are following the specification and you are changing something it doesn't mean that backward compatibility will break okay any further questions when two threads attempts to load the same object inside a number thread what happens when two threads try to uh, load a same class is it yes uh -huh. okay. what will happen will it create any Instead of running that, I am just creating a new object. That is my own class. Yes. And uh, I am creating two threads. So they are attempting to run the run that thread, and then first line is to load the new class. Right. But you will have only one class loader, right? Ah, correct. So, but both requests will be sent, right? Both the thread will see that class is not loaded. Yes. So it will first check it out. Uh, whoever thread will come first, it will check it out. This class is already loaded or not? And then, uh, according to whatever the thread you Somewhere will get. Somewhere I have read that like, you know, if I put this class loading, this object creation inside a static installation, right? So the JDK will automatically take care of this multi-threading problem. Right? Yes. Uh, yes. So in the current day, it's automatic. This is you are asking parallel class loading. I mean, you are there, right? No, no, when no. I was discussing. Yeah, yeah. Right. Ah, uh, you are you are discussing something else, I think. So. Uh, Okay, I am kind of done. If uh, any one of you are interested, okay, I'll just finish this. If any one of you are interested in understanding class loader, which most of us are not, but still, if you are interested, you should read these things. I have put must read. This is the orderly reference. The internals of Java class loader it goes into very detail. Second is module class loading only for JDK nine interested parties. Java doc of the class loader actually covers a lot of things. Okay, it is not like the normal Java Java doc. Okay, it, it it gives lot of in, uh, information, and JLS uh, you should read uh, chapter twelve. The chapter uh, name should called execution. The chapter twelve is execution. It tells how a class get executed. Okay, and uh, how a class get executed. There is a part how the class loader works. So the Java language specification you should see for chapter twelve. And for any query, you can write a mail to me. If you have any query with the uh, JDK nine class loaders, you can put in the jigsaw uh, development. Uh, Elias, yeah. So before putting here, uh, please review the post. Recently, we got a we we got a post that can someone explain what is Jigsaw? Okay, so people started giving lot of uh, nice explanation. <laughs> so that kind of question should not be posted, right? That kind of question should not be posted, right? Okay. Any any further questions? Please let me know. what we are going to achieve we are going to achieve a lot of things which uh, may be covered in the second slide uh, there is something called class path hell uh, you are you are covering that right okay so um, <clears throat> class path is actually a very complex system in uh, today's uh, generation okay so if you will see the framework on or the uh, or the say app servers and all they write a uh, lot of their own classes and they create lot of their own jars and they use the class uh, loaders in any way okay which creates lot of problem so with uh, jigsaw actually um, 
the understanding of the class is much before uh, the class loading starts. It, because you will have a file called uh, module info.java where you have to tell your dependency before. That I have a class A which is dependent on this, this class. So I can find a class very easily there. Okay, a class loader can find a class much easier. You, you must have seen whenever you will start your Eclipse, it will tell uh, uh, something in the downside, right? That uh, um, indexing or loading the classes, just wait, right? And it will, it will run like for five minutes. Okay, it will tell you something, loading the class or loading the class path, right? So, um, Jigsaw, we can have a discussion in detail. Actually, I am not uh, very much uh, known about the Jigsaw. But I can find out the people who can explain you the Jigsaw class loaders and what are the advantages than the older class loaders. Yeah. So uh, thank you. Okay. Thanks a lot. We'll have a five-minute break and then we'll get the second presentation and then the third presentation is going to be really interesting.